me think. What would be another good one? Oh, I'll tell you what a fun one to talk about would obviously be the heroic team because it's quite a, quite an out there roster, right? I don't think a lot of people know what to make of it. So first of all, obviously the problem is just because of the rumour mill, people thought that Heroic was getting the three players from Enson, that it was just going to be all good, and you know, saw moves over with his boys, minus Snappy, basically. And then it's sort of like, actually, the joke is if you could have had that team and Kixon, you probably, you actually already would be back in a good position. Maybe you'd be shooting, you know, firing on all cylinders, whereas instead you've ended up with this weird roster where you've got Kixon, okay, so he made the big signing. By the way, behind the scenes, I've heard actually among players, he does have something of like a shoe type hype. People think he is a good in-game leader behind the scenes, and like he's like, sort of proven himself so fair play there's some player hype that's a good sign and then obviously you have gotten nerds top 20 player on HLTV was like one of the revelations of 2023 at times looks really good but the problem is beyond that like the joke is after that I would skip to the coach minute. you've got saw it's like because yeah. beyond that what have you got like yeah okay you, you kept Shush and Tessas that's pretty good but like they weren't like the big big names you've got kind of a weird roster for me like I, I, I like my initial feeling is the sort of in no man's land like I feel like you'll just sort of mm. be floating around and you just won't be relevant that's my sense I'm, are you having a stronger feeling on this stack are you thinking they're going to be actually a top team can they do it with this core no <laughs> I feel like they have a core in kicks and nerds and saw and then mm. they're hoping that one of Shush and T or Tessis proves themselves enough so that they don't have to change both, which my money is on Shush out of those two. Um, and then, as in, as in, which one they should change? You mean? No, the one that's tape. The one that key. You keep, keep Shush. Shush. Yeah, okay. I thought Tessis was one of those guys who would uh, drop off in some like of the streaky big as games. Fucking, yeah, yeah, like pressure would get to him, you know, and and that kind of a thing. Right. But we'll see. And Nikodos, if. Somehow he proves himself, but he's had a couple of opportunities by now. Didn't really pan out. And yes. especially if, you know, I heard the same things about Kickson, and then you add nerds there and stuff. Those guys deserve yeah, they someone better shot, than right? does. you know, like in, in that sense. And th then you would have a really good team. The fifth player, you know, you could see who you could round it up with after the major. I think it's another one of those teams where we'll see. I mean, bro, even this, e e even the close qualifier for the RMR, is you know oh, stacked cycle, okay yeah. a lot of teams will go through mm. to the rmr uh from the close qualifier but for example once we get there i'm not sure heroic makes it to the major like that they will get out of the rmr obviously long ways away not know about the teams but i wouldn't put my money on them to make it that far um but obviously thinking long term for the org you know going international for going full danish i think they did a good job of sure your your main guys are in-game leader and upper, but they got an in-game leader and a star rifle and a really good coach. So that's good enough in my book when it comes to team building and knowing that, you know, at the time with the major looming and the first CS2 major, it's not like you could have gotten an upper and bought them out as easily. Sure. I heard the same thing that they were trying to get the end score. Gets Falcons outbid or, or, or whatever, not surprised by that. And, you know, it is what it is, but uh, yeah, definitely two more player changes before I before they make me excited. Done. I think the saddest part of it is how much of a pit stop it will represent for Nerds. I think Nerds didn't have to go through that anymore. I think he'd already he'd already had his sort of takeoff. Like, that was it. I mean, he's Rookie of the Year. He's obviously a, a very interesting player to follow. I don't think he needed, or I would have wished he didn't have to kind of live through some of these months to come, because I agree, this team is, is not going to be a top 10 team. You do have a couple of pieces and elements that you would want to hold on to. If Kixon ends up being a shoey like one of the great leaders of, of the years to come, great. Maybe you, you've made a good operation here. Uh, Nerds, obviously, fantastic signing. So he, he showcased what he could do in ends. Shush, as a reliable piece, I'm ready to buy it. But that's about it. Uh, Tessis and Nikodos, as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm kind of sort of over it. I, I wouldn't really give it too, too much time at the very, very top. So, yeah, it's annoying because it means for nerds and what I mean, I'm looking at it on a very individualistic level. For nerds, it means I'm going to have to wait a little longer. I'm going to have to wait the whatever next team is going to be uh, in order for him to perform. But the, the problem is if, if we are imagining, if we are tracking nerds and his progress and where he can end up in top Counter-Strike, who then joins Heroic that is going to be a great improvement? Who would want to join Heroic? What are the arguments? Yeah, sure, Kixon is an argument, and then Nerds and so on, that's it. But there are teams above that, that would have been or will be then much more interesting. And if I was a top player, I would have to consider it. And you just imagine if Nerds had followed the, you know, the core events with Magisk then, like, holy hell, he would have been straight lined up into yes. a, a team that would defend or would have, a, a, I guess, a say, a candidacy for playoffs run here and there. So I'm, I'm personally frustrated 
for nerds. For Kickstand, I think it's all right because I, I know a whole lot of people on, on, on the hype train. I, I'm a little bit more moderate. I do think, I don't want to jump the gun. I think he's done fairly good with the pieces he had. I still want to see. And I think this could be a pretty decent um, position for him to prove. Like, you know, with a, with a team that is far from being perfect, he could still get some results. He could still overperform with the, with the team. And then if he does that, then like his case becomes 10 times stronger. If he actually gets decent results with this heroic, then the value of Kixon will immediately go through the roof, which would be great for him. But yeah, I'm a little bit frustrated. Honestly, this this roster is not exactly what I wanted it to be, at least for for Nurse, because I I value him greatly. And they probably need to shell out a little bit when they do bring players, because I, I was thinking like they need to find a diamond in the rough. But you know, Nurse just won Rookie of the Year, right? <laughs> so it's not like he's some super experienced veteran. Okay, sure, he's not a rookie yeah. anymore. Kixan as well, like on a proper tier one team, like Apex was a just outside of that i think yes. it's fair to say they were a tier two team they probably punched above their weight a little bit that's why he got a spot on heroic but you probably want to bring some experienced rifle that's why some pious would have been great like someone who can also help a little bit maybe as a secondary caller right something like that i wanted to say <coughs> that if they can't get anyone like that they should maybe try and get regali from og but he's also a super young and, and not really experienced player so then you're in the danger of right like that being something that hurts you but i don't know this this heroic team doesn't do anything for me on the other side the astralis team paying <laughs> the paying big bucks to get stone and yabby you arguably they have four of the best players in that yeah world. i tell you what we'll pivot to that next because i'll, I'll and put they have in the best and they have the best ceo in the game yeah well, <laughs> so he is back. I will. Say, you know what's sad, by the way, before we get into that, I will just say, I, I won't even lie. In a world, what you have to ask, I remember always, is the like the greater evil question. Because I'll tell you what, obviously, once upon a time, Nicola Noaiho was the big bad, as they say in American TV terminology. He was like the main villain, right, of By the Numbers, obviously, most iconically. And in, in some ways, we built him up as like some super evil mastermind. I'll tell you what, in a way, that is annoying because you think, oh, what a bastard. But that's actually way better than just like, like some faceless country buys into a game or like some giant corp. Like that's not a good bad guy. That's just fucking faceless, isn't it? Like in some ways, I at least like the wrestling angle. That's like a character. Like <laughs> when I saw that tweet, I was also sort of like, oh shit, he's back. He's back. He's back. You're like, of course. Like it was hype. I can't lie. I, I almost made a comment, but I withheld it for the time being. We'll put a pin in that because I have one last thing to say about the heroic one, which goes like this. The pro I actually think Nianko's nailed it. One of the reasons I'm really not in on this lineup, because actually when you look at the lineup on paper, it's not terrible. Like considering they look like, they, I mean, they were taking some really dodgy makeshift lineups to these blasts. Like obviously it's way better than that. There's at least something there. But actually I'll start with that point Yanko made about nerds. Dude, this is where people have got to stop looking at fucking HLTV rating. Because when nerds has a big tournament, the HLTV rating tells you he's the next Nico level rifler. He isn't. He's in his first year as a pro, guys. Like, we we are actually taking what he did at Ents, where he was the younger one with a mega veteran IGL as well, by the way. A, a, like, a coach and IGL who scouted him, and then they had that core existing before him. Like, that's a really good situation for a rookie. We're now in this team acting like he's the one who's going to do, like, Nico numbers and be taken care of, and then we're going to worry about the rest. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We can't take for granted that he's going to do that in this squad. We don't even yet know how is he going to, like, interact with Kixon? Like, how is is that going to be a good synergy? Do they get each other? So I already think people are jumping the gun on that one. On the Nikodos one, unfortunately, he just never made it after Copenhagen Flames. It's funny because if everyone remembers when Copenhagen Flames made those major runs, the actual players that were hyped was fucking Roy and Nikodos. It was never it was never Yabby. Yabby was sort of just in the middle of the pack. And obviously, actually, of the three, he looks like the best player so far, even though, yes, he had a bit of a dip at the end when they all went to shit in Heroic. And then the last thing I would say is, let me think how to phrase it this way. The problem I have with the kicks and move as well is this. We've obviously only seen him in that Apex team. They had the one major run. Then, yes, admittedly, because they lost GL, they had to reset a little bit. And then they were like, okay, aside from that. My problem is people are forgetting that team used to be coached by Cuban, who obviously now coaches Ents. And as far as I know, he was one of those coaches who was allowed like saying the players they picked up. And as far as I know, like GL was his boy, for example, and he picked him up and put him. So the problem there is I want to see kicks and without someone else setting the team. I want to see him. Like, by the way, if he can do some 
the way the squad, he probably is amazing. Like, I think the squad's pretty ropey. Like, I actually don't mm. see why this, like, why would this be a top 10 team? I don't think it would be. I don't, I don't even know really what the hope is. Like, as far as I can tell, this is almost like a stopgap roster. Like, you almost have to hope. It's like, right, what I'm really hoping, like like you say, Yanko, is I'm really just hoping kicks and Nerds really prove themselves. And then it, and then around the major, if people don't know that, coincidentally, is when actually a bunch of contracts come up. Then I just sign whoever I need to. Do I really need to buy with a big hopper? Do I need another big rifle? That's when I'll figure out what I need. But I don't think I don't think even Heroic believe, since they didn't get some pious, this is the lineup. Come on, Maniac. No, no, I agree. I just wanted to say on the nurse point, I'm I'm with you on on we should be careful what kind of acronyms we give him right now. My fear is that he could actually just just as quickly we, we put him higher up on the pedestal, he could disappear very quickly. That's sure. my fear. Because yeah. I, I personally value a lot. Like the eye test when he when I see him play, I think he's an incredible player. And I would I would bet, you know, on his future in the game. But the truth is I don't know if he's ready right now to be the champion carrying a team that is unbalanced, a little bit unstable. But because if he starts underperforming, people are going to be relatively quickly to put him back under the rug. And that's yes. going to be it. And this is this is why I fear for him, because I do think there, there are risks. There are real risks. If this heroic project is to crash, and by crash, I mean miss out on the very good competitions, miss out on the group stage of of Cologne, all of these, like the major cycle and all. If they disappear, nerds will have an expiration date on... on for how long do we hold on to the idea that he's going to be the next big thing and he could become an incredible rifle? There's going to be an expiration date that's going to go real fast. So this is the worry that I have. I don't know if he is quite ready now because the, the, the counter flip side of this argument is if he keeps continue, or he continues, sorry, to be so strong and he pushes Heroic to oh, the finish sure. line, then oh my God, that's it. Yeah. Like, like he, he's put all doubts to bed. Yes. But that, that's a huge if. And I don't want to say it's a coin flip because obviously he's got his fate in his own hands, but... Wow, like uh, it's a Damocles sword he's got above him right now. Oh, and one last thing to say, because obviously we'll switch to the Australia stuff. But on the on the players that stayed, right, here's what's funny is I actually made this point that I can't remember who else made the point. Maybe it was like Maui Snake or someone on Twitter. I actually did think the funny thing about the Astralis movies, that is just like a fan would do. They just stacked all the names. Whereas like the Jokers, if you're actually looking for roles, I'm amazed Astralis didn't take one of Shush and fucking Tessas. Like, I agree with the Shush angle, by the way. Of the two players, the difference is Shush just really looks like, I mean, it's why his name's appropriate. He's just like a sleeper. He's just like a really smart player who seems to be actually have like a very good sense of his own game and fills in all the fucking holes in the team. He's just a really solid player. Meanwhile, the problem with Tessas is this. I actually do like him as a player and I think his aim is very good, but I will say this right now. I think he is a player that you will see was to some degree a product of Cadian's system. As in, I think he got to look amazing when they would make those like snap mid-round calls on T-side, all rush a site together and then he had total confidence in the call and everyone backing him up. That's probably the number one team of the last few years where everyone backs you up on the call. And if you're the entry, dream scenario. They all come in, you make the space, they take the space, they follow you in, they go to the side. In this team, I don't know what's going to be like. I have no idea if it's going to be anything comparable to Cadian's approach. So if you just, like, the, the point I'm making is Tessis isn't your kinder. He isn't just some, like, monster guy, like, he'll figure it out. Like, I don't know. I've, I've only seen him be amazing in that one team. And even then, he was pretty streaky, like Yanko said. So to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.